Hello everybody, Joe Davin with Healthcare Solutions Team. Wanted to touch on something that's somewhat contentious and surely that everybody that doesn't do health insurance, and actually a lot of people that do work in health insurance daily don't understand. That is the ACA or Obamacare subsidies. And then we're gonna expand on how they've changed going forward into open enrollment for next year's plans 2022. Um, those that are low income, are going to be quite happy because subsidies are going up and I'm going to explain all that and I know my handwriting is garbage but uh, just try to follow along it's going to make a ton of sense as we go through here so we're going to start by how subsidies are determined okay the way the government determines whether or not you qualify for subsidy is based on income and household size and when I say income the number that the government is looking for is this cute little acronym called MAGI modified adjusted gross income. So on your Form 1040, on your taxes, you have a line that says adjusted gross income. And then MAGI adjusts that slightly. It also includes non-taxable Social Security and then some income most people don't have, like foreign income and things of that nature. So here's something I want you to know. When we're talking about next year's plans, 2022, the government doesn't want to know what this number is for 2021. They want to know what we think the number will be in 2022. We are always projecting the following year's income. Okay, so that's the first thing you have to do. If you're single, you got to project yours. If it's a household, uh, you're married with kids, it has to be the entire household's uh, income that we're trying to predict. And then the other thing that matters is household size. So if you're married, you have to file jointly to qualify for subsidy and um, we're including all anybody you claim as a dependent will affect how much money you're going to get from the government uh, uh, for subsidy okay and there's some other rules like if you're offered employer coverage uh, oftentimes it eliminates the whole household from being able to qualify for subsidy and we'll talk about medicaid for kids under 18 but i just want to get you the basics that's the numbers we're looking for to determine subsidy now this is where it gets interesting and surely confusing Okay, before 2021, before Biden had an office and they passed all this stimulus and the government's printing money like crazy. I, I mean, we're printing money like crazy at all times, but specifically over the last year. Um, I'm going to talk about how the subsidies work and how we determined it. Okay, the government has something uh, uh, called the federal poverty level chart. Okay, so aside from income and household size, the third thing that helps us determine our subsidy is the federal poverty level. So I'm gonna to skip to right here, okay? They have this, this nice chart, you can Google it, and you can see certain steps of federal poverty level, 100%, 200%, 300%, 400%. So if you're at 100% federal poverty level, let's say you're just a, a single uh, tax filer, you're making around 12,700 a year, 12,700. If you are near 400% federal poverty level, you're making about 51,000 per year, okay? And you can see how household size affects where you fall on that federal poverty level chart. If you're a family of four, 100% federal poverty level would be about 26.2K, whereas 400% would be about 104.8K, all right? So this is very important to understand, especially when talking about the huge changes that could benefit you for 2022. And, and you can always call me. You don't have to learn all this. I can do it all for you very, very quickly uh, and help you make the best decision. So before 2021, you'll notice that depending on where you fell on this chart, for instance, if you were between 100 and 138% of federal poverty level, the most they could charge you for health insurance was about 2% of your income, okay? What if you fell between 250 and 300%? They can charge you anywhere from 8.33 to 9.83% of your income. Of course, the government makes this very difficult. The people that really got hurt by Obamacare were the ones making over 400% federal poverty. So if you were a single making 51,000, you would qualify for no government assistance in your subsidy, okay? Now, I'm going to do an example that's gonna bring this all together at the end, but notice how it's changed now for 2022 moving forward. If you make 100% to 138% federal poverty, you'll pay 0% for your health insurance, okay? Now, not everybody will, because what they're basing this off of is the benchmark plan. That's what I'm gonna get into. 
What if you make over 400% federal poverty level? This is the biggest change. These were households of four, five, six people. Maybe they were making a modest income, but once they made over, let's say it's a household of four, made over 104,000, they would get no subsidy. And they were looking at health insurance plans, 1,500, 2,000 bucks a month and up. Now it's capped at eight and a half percent. But what's capped, what, what, are the, what is the insurance plan they're comparing this to, 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 to get these percentages? Well, the government calls that the benchmark plan, okay? And when you look for health insurance in your county, the government will rate the plans bronze, silver, gold, sometimes platinum. Bronze plan is very high deductible, not many benefits. Silver plan, more reasonable deductibles, uh, stronger benefits, okay? So the government, to calculate these numbers, uses the second lowest cost silver level plan in your area, okay? There's a website called healthsherpa.com where you can actually plug in your zip code and your family size and you can look at what that second lowest cost silver level plan is, okay? So that's how we get these, uh, when we're talking about what percentage of income you pay, it's what percentage of income do you pay for this benchmark plan, all right? So hopefully that makes sense because it's gonna make a whole lot more sense when I give you an example, all right? And, and just know that these subsidies going up, it helps when you're low income, especially if you're over 400% federal poverty level, because a lot of these people could not qualify for subsidy before. But now, if let's just look at an example. Okay, this is my zip code. I don't know you know where I live, but uh, uh, let's say you're a 55-year-old male. You're living in 60622 in Chicago, okay? And this applies to all the states I'm licensed in. Let, your income's 25K. So, bringing everything together, because I, I, I know I flew through all this, Income 25,000. So you fall at right about 200% federal poverty level, okay? That's where you fall on the chart that Health and Human Services puts out, okay? Now, when we talk about 200% federal poverty level, let's say before, you would have to pay anywhere from 4.14 to 6.52%. Since we're at 200%, you'd have to pay around 6.52% of your income for that benchmark plan. The second lowest cost silver level plan, the benchmark plan in this zip code is about $600 a month, okay? It's, that's wildly expensive if you had to pay full price. So if we're going before 2022 and moving forward, 6.5% of your income would actually be about 135 bucks a month because you take 25,000 divided by 12 and then times 0.065 or 6.5%, 135 bucks per month is what you would pay for this $600 plan. That means your subsidy, and, and you could plug this into Health Sherpa, okay? And I'm gonna put my link in, um, in the comments here uh, or in the description. So you can do all this and sign up all on your own. I, I prefer you reach out to me. But that means your subsidy would be the difference of the 135 and the 600. So your subsidy would be $465 a month before 2022, okay? So that means, despite this plan being $135 a month, you probably have some bronze level plans that are much less expensive than this, where this 465 might cover the whole premium. Now, moving forward, remember this same person, 200% federal poverty level, they would only have to pay 2% of their income, okay? So the subsidy is gonna be much higher. Now we're talking about 25,000 divided by 12 times 2%, the most you could pay for that a uh, uh, benchmark plan, $41, which means your subsidy is no longer $465, it's $559. That means plans that are more benefits than the silver level plan, the subsidy is going to be higher. And then those plans that are lesser, um, this subsidy is probably going to pay the whole premium. You know, I, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, like a lot of bronze level plans, the $559 is going to cover the whole. Uh, um, premium monthly, okay? So this is humongous news, all right? Like I said, you could call me, we could discuss this right over the phone, 708-566-6589. I'm not here to debate whether or not this whole system is good and sustainable. I mean, there's families now making $120,000 a year getting subsidies of like 1,000 to 1,200 a month, government money. Is the system sustainable? I don't know and I don't care. My job is to help you do what's best. So. 
realize I, I, I gave this example based on somebody in 200% federal poverty level. Somebody in 400%, um, remember, before they would get no subsidy. Now it's capped at 8.5% of their income doing the same type of comparison. So a lot of people that weren't getting any subsidy and were getting crushed by Obamacare, their rates were skyrocketing year over year. They might get some help now, okay, which is good news. Now, lastly, um, one thing I didn't mention uh, as any of this, aside from the subsidy that you get each month, whether it be the 465 or the 559 uh, uh, moving forward, there's other uh, benefits that you qualify for if you are under 250% federal poverty level, there's something we call cost sharing. So on silver level plans, they take the deductibles and they lower them quite substantially. Okay, I can make other videos about that to explain it. Uh, it's a big deal. Um, don't even learn all this. This is craziness. I know some people are interested. That's why I put out these videos as strictly educational. But I do health insurance in 20 to 22 different states. Okay, if you have any questions, if you want to help signing up for 2022. If you want to get on the schedule, reach out right away. Depending on when you see this video, it's either mid-September or it could be November, December. We could be smack dab in the middle of open enrollment. Call me, text me, email me, and we'll get the ball rolling. Thanks.